Talk Math Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to unbox, assemble, and test out our new X-Tool diode laser. So let's get to it. A huge thanks to Exo for sending us this laser. We're really excited to try it out. And if you want to try out the same product we're using, we'll have the link in the description. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get to unboxing this X-Tool V1 Pro Golden Red Diode Laser. And this is the 10 watt edition. So we're going to go ahead and get to unboxing. <laughs> All right, all unboxed. Here's our machine. This is a massive laser head, way bigger than our other diode laser. It also has the ability to have air assist in here. And I think it comes with a little connection that we'll have to set up at some other time, but that's pretty neat. So obviously we got our Y axis here, the front and back uh, with the circuit board, and then our gantry for laser to go back and forth on in the X direction. Got some connections, some grease, safety glasses, of course, and then all the tools necessary to put this together. A little mini SD card, and then a lot of sample material. Really happy about that. So we got some cork, some 1 8 inch, looks like plywood. And I'm really interested to see if this laser can actually cut through all of that. We got some aluminum here and then some aluminum business cards. And then what looks like a little stamp pad or something, this little block of wood. Not really sure what this is for, Just yet and we got some acrylic rounds power cables our usb cord and then what i really love about this detailed instructions so this is going to help us put this thing together all right so let's get to assembling
So this is kind of neat. It comes with its own little focal length bar that snaps into place with magnets. The bar touches the material where it's at and then you can tighten it. Little thumb screw. And then you can just move this out of the way. So that plate that it comes with is to protect the surface because this isn't going to cut through aluminum. Why is that laser way over there? Okay, so I'm here on the Xtool website. You can see we have a download button for the Xtool Creative Space, which we can use to run the machine and put in our designs. We're gonna go and do that here. You just click download. Mac OS with an M102 chip. Okay, so now that it's downloaded, I've opened it up from my downloads folder, and all we have to do is drag this into our application folder. And now we can open it. All right, so here we go. So the next step we need to do is to connect our device and we have plugged it in in USB and I'm going to turn on the machine. So now I'm going to hit this connect device button and there it is picked up from USB. So very important to note, this machine does support Wi-Fi. So this machine actually has a Wi-Fi antenna here at the bottom. So that's a Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, so you can control this machine without plugging in, but you do need to plug it in via USB for the first time to set up. So to set up the Wi-Fi, it's pretty easy. Once you are connected via USB, you're gonna click this little settings button, and then you're gonna go to settings, and it will pick up your Wi-Fi network. And once you enter a correct password, you'll see Wi-Fi configuration is complete. Now disconnect the USB cable and try operating your device wirelessly. So I'm gonna disconnect. And you can see our little LED button turned green here, which means we're connected to our network. I'm gonna go ahead and connect device again. And this time we're gonna connect via Wi-Fi. And now you can see, here's our X tool and we're connected. So now I'm just gonna test this out. I'm just gonna draw a little rectangle here and see if the machine will frame it out. There you go. So we are actually connected via Wi-Fi with this machine. Uh, we do intend to use Lightburn to run this machine, not the software that we just downloaded. And Lightburn does not support Wi-Fi. So we're gonna actually show you now how to connect this thing to Lightburn, which is a completely different process. I gotta actually disconnect the Wi-Fi, otherwise it will keep trying to plug in via Wi-Fi, so. Okay, so to actually run this on Lightburn, it's not as simple as just opening Lightburn and adding a new device. You actually need to download a file uh, here from this website. So at xtool.zendesk.com, we'll have some operating instructions on how to connect this machine to Lightburn. Again, we have Lightburn already downloaded, but we do need to download this file here, which is a configuration file for the D1 Pro to connect to, to Lightburn. So pretty simple, we just, Click on that and that will start a download. And then you can see once we get into Lightburn, it gives you all the instructions of how to import that file. So that's all we're gonna do is be importing a file rather than setting it up. We would normally just hit the Find My Laser with. So let's go ahead and get into Lightburn. Turn off the machine. Okay, so now we're in Lightburn. We're gonna go ahead and click on Devices and we're going to Import. On the desktop, I saved our file. And once we open that, you can see it adds our D1 Pro there. We can just hit OK. And now you can see it set it up and laser is ready. Important to know here that you do need to disconnect the Wi-Fi from this machine. Otherwise, we had problems connecting it via the USB again. So I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna do a little rectangle here again, and let's frame this out to see if it works. All right, we are all set up. Time for that first project. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up our materials test and then we're gonna just put in some scrap wood in the machine so that we can see what it's gonna look like when we get to engraving. So we're gonna to go to laser tools, material test. And here we're just going to test our speed and power. Um, we're still in millimeters per second because of our fiber laser setup. So I'm actually going to change this back into millimeters per minute. So I'm gonna to go to general settings here and change this into 
millimeters per minute, which is better for a diode. Click OK there, back into our material test, and let's see, this looks better. So I'm going to change this to, I don't know how fast this can go, but let's say 3000 millimeters per minute, min 600 millimeters per minute. And I don't want to do 100% on this because it's going to burn right through. So I'm going to just, I'm going to go to 90, see what that does. And then I'm going to change this to something smaller. And then let's see here for our interval, I'm actually going to do 0.1. I think we're set up for a materials test. All right, so I've got the aluminum plate that they sent with this machine underneath it so we don't burn through our table if this were to burn right through. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set this down and we're going to get our little uh, distance arm here, set that down. You can see we need to raise up the laser a little bit, loosen this up, raise the laser till that little arm touches. And then I'm going to tighten the laser just like that. And then I'm going to move this arm up. Now we know we're focused correctly and let's go ahead and frame this out so we know where to put this piece of wood. Yeah, this is a little too small. So we're going to put another scrap in and I'm going to refocus it because this one is slightly thinner. Well, maybe not. It's actually touching. All right, let's frame this out again. So what's kind of neat here is the framing, you can see that there's crosshairs here and that definitely does not line up with the laser, but that's on purpose. They moved the laser over, I think it said like something like 16 millimeters so that you can actually see where the laser would go. So it's already calibrated so that it will move over to that spot. So we'll see here and verify that, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this up right on the corner there. And then we should see that first marking way up on that corner. So let's go ahead and get this material test started. Okay, so we got an alarm for fire detection. This is a pretty powerful laser. We've already burnt through the wood here on 36% power. So I'm gonna have to adjust the parameters of our material test way down. All right, so our first material test is done and we got a lot better results than the first one where we just kind of burned through. So what I wanna do now is I wanna do another material test, but I'm gonna use our best power setting. So it looks like anywhere between 17 and 19. And then I'm gonna refine my speed, but I also want to test our interval. So how many lines per millimeter that go. So that's gonna be my parameters, speed and interval. And I'm gonna set the power to, I think 17 is pretty good. And I'll just make sure I adjust just our speed so that we don't get this charring because I kind of like how we can get a lot of different shades here. So that's what I'm going to do and we'll just do it on the other side here. All right, so I'm back here. We're going to do our second materials test, speed and interval and my minimum interval 0.08. My maximum interval is going to be 0.2. Change this back down to three and my speed, I like basically everything above 850. Max 3000. All right, let's frame this out. We're done with our second materials test and we got some much better results showing kind of the different shadings of charred wood we can get through our interval and our speed. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pick the best setting and do a little project. We did 0.13 interval at 18.06 and 17% power. Let's get this set up. All right, so now they got all the settings configured. Since it's the holiday season, we're gonna go ahead and engrave this on a little ornament. So let's get to engraving. OK, 
Okay, so it's done and it looks really good, except it didn't do it in the center. So I don't know if there's a calibration for this little crosshair thing. I definitely put it in the middle of this and this is kind of off by a few millimeters. I will say that the actual engraving looks really nice. No char marks or burn marks. And we, it looks like we dialed in our engraving settings pretty well. In order to get this crosshair line lined up with our actual laser head, we're going to do some adjustment here. And it's actually pretty easy to do in Lightburn. So all I did is made a little cross here that I'm gonna line up with the red crosshairs. So in Lightburn, I made this little crosshair uh, thing real quick with a little square just to kind of test to see how far off we are from our marked crosshair. And it's actually really easy to adjust in Lightburn. If you go to device settings here, you can see your laser pointer offset is right here and you automatically brought in at negative 16, which is what is listed in the manual. Uh, but I feel like it's just a little bit off. So we're going to go ahead and do a test here to see how far off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I use a user origin and then I set the origin where the laser is right now because I've already laid the crosshairs where they need to be. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Okay, and if we look at this real quick, we can see that we are off about, I'd say two and a half millimeters. So I'm gonna adjust it real quick to minus 18.5 and see. I'm gonna do this again in the same spot. Okay, I need to make sure I set the origin to where it is right now, and I'm gonna start. Maybe I can bring it back just a tad and then we'll be pretty perfect. Yep, it's perfect. So we got some pretty good results, but do you have anything to note? Well, the first thing I want to note is how much easier this is to put together than our other diode laser. The instruction manual was very, very clear with clear pictures as to step-by-step -step instructions on how to install. And the fit and finish of it is, it's, it's good. With an open air gantry style diode laser, it makes it so that you could engrave pretty much anything of any size, which we're obviously limited to size in our other style of lasers because it just doesn't fit inside. So pros and cons here with the open air gantry system is again, you could put a whole dining room table and engrave something right in the middle of it if we wanted to with no concern over the size of the material that we are engraving. The downside, of course, is with it being open air, means all of that smoke is kind of just going out. It's definitely uh, important to make sure you're engraving in a very well ventilated space to blow that smoke out of your area. So never use this in an enclosed space. And also don't forget there's a bunch of different accessories you can buy to attach on that help with air or you can even get a bigger frame to engrave even bigger spaces. Absolutely. The next really cool feature about this laser is the fact that it's Wi-Fi connected. Unfortunately for us, we use Lightburn and that is not currently capable to send laser files via Wi-Fi to the laser. But if we were gonna be using the software that comes with the machine, it's really neat to be able to just wirelessly send it from one room and it automatically start over in another. So that's really neat. But don't leave your laser unattended still. No, absolutely not. But it still is neat to not have to connect something. Mm -hmm. So after testing it out overall, would you recommend this machine? I absolutely would. The fit and finish of this machine is really, really nice. Uh, again, the assembly and all of that was really good. And the power of it is really good. It's certainly an upgrade that we have now to our arsenal of diode lasers. So absolutely would recommend this. So we've been fortunate enough to try a bunch of different lasers and I think all of them have a place in our garage. Yeah, absolutely. What's very unique and different about this particular laser is obviously the size uh, difference. So the ability to engrave large things that wouldn't otherwise fit in the space allocated for our other lasers, as well as it still is capable of doing a whole lot of different materials. So we certainly look forward to using this in the future. So once again, thank you to Xtool for sending us this laser. It really is a cool laser and we'll have the links to it in the description. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you're reminded every single time we post a video, stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.